Hey, everybody. So I wanted to talk about Mike again, given everything that's going on. So I received quite a few comments that Mike's involvement with Cinemassacre, it was pretty clear that in the last several months to a year or more, he wasn't very involved with the AVGN-related material. He was doing rental reviews for a while until they canceled that. He was doing James and Mike Mondays, and then they canceled that. And he was also doing just reviews in general on the channel. So he was doing pretty light lift stuff, just involved with dialogue that didn't even seem really scripted. He wasn't doing any real scripts for shooting uh, episodes of the AVGN. And he definitely didn't really help with the movie boy back in the day. So you know he's not really into that kind of stuff. And obviously his interests are gameplays. But when you look at Mike's subscriber count, he's got a little over 50,000 subs, which is, you know, I would love to have that many on my channel. I'm pretty new. But for somebody to be attached to a channel like Screenwave, Cinemassacre, AVGN for over 10 years... And to only have that many subs when you're arguably one of the the original founding members, it's just interesting that he doesn't have more subs than that. And retro gaming, it's no surprise that it's not as popular as it used to be, given the fact that time passes and games get old and people want to see new games. But you would think that he would have more subs than that. And given that he's got a couple channels, you know, you've pool that he's probably making some money so people did say that he working with cinemassacre was going to get less of a cut of the overall business than if he just focused on his own channels now i can't argue with that i absolutely agree with that but at the same time when you look at the amount of money that you're probably going to make off of 50k subs as compared to over 3 million where clearly ScreenWave has a bunch of sponsorship deals worked out, you got to wonder how much he's making. And I I need to look in more in depth with the number of ads on his videos. I don't really recall there being a ton, but I'm sure he does have some ads. I haven't seen Mike do any product intros, um, so you know he's probably not getting a ton of sponsorships. Later on, he probably could, but I think part of this is because his past is coming back to haunt him. So he's left and he has his name all over his his sites and his social media presence so he's branded his sites mike matai and that really makes it pretty easy for people to remember who he is so i don't know maybe it would be a good idea for him to rebrand and kind of distance himself from everything that's going on so once screenwave took over mike was kind of tagged by the fans whether this happened or not with the situation where bootsy left and not a lot of information was given out and people were like hey where'd he go so people kind of blamed mike for that and he was more or less the scapegoat for that incident and then you also had the which cinemasker truth posts this all over the place the comic that he did the local bandito so that was pretty uh that was pretty bad too and he did that in his 20s so quite a while ago so he's 40 now so he did that quite a while ago but even then the comics were pretty unforgivable to a lot of people so mike's trying to get away from that bad PR history, and that could be driving his subscriber base down. But either way, you would, you've would you seen people with a lot less of a concept and background having 100 subs or more. So just wanted to you know put that out as food for thought. Eventually, he'll be uh, probably get more subs and keep going, especially if he's working with Aaron Plays, and maybe her channel will pick up more speed than his. Mike does have more of a Twitch presence than Aaron right now. But overall, you have to wonder um, what the future holds for Mike. Anyway, that's all I had for today. Just wanted to share some thoughts. Feel free to like, share, and subscribe, and take care.